What's up? So, and episode 9. This episode was actually very enjoyable for me. I mean, I know in the last episodes I weren't really enjoying it as much. I'd enjoy some things and some things I won't enjoy. But in this one, I found it actually very entertaining. I didn't feel bored for a second. I liked the dialogue. I loved the characters in this episode and the acting was phenomenal. Uh, as always in this show, I mean the acting has always been really good from start to finish so far. So that's definitely a big positive. This episode was in addition to the prison arc. Uh, which I thought was going to be three episodes long uh, because every arc in this show is meant to be three episodes each. Three episodes, three episodes, three episodes, and the last two episodes, making up all 12. But for this one, I think it's going to be four episodes, which means you have two for the finale. In the last two episodes of this arc, we've just had a long, slow build-up as we normally do in this show, but this one actually was pretty entertaining. It's definitely kind of like Squid Games, has that Squid Games feel, but it doesn't actually have the same premise as we all thought it would have, because basically in this episode what we find out is that everyone in the prison is going to get killed off at some point, very soon, as the guy at the end says, who's trying to revive one of the inmates. Uh, the old guy who seems to be having heart problems and a stroke but after asking loads of people what's going on throughout this episode we're trying to find out what's actually going on and what this bickering is about we find out that yeah the empire is trying to kill off everyone in the prison after a certain point which makes me feel like the empire is just using them to build parts for the death star now i think this is a big brain theory but you guys can tell me if it's just a generic basic theory and i might be over exaggerating a bit but yeah i feel like the empire is using them to build parts for the death star but the empire doesn't want anyone outside of that prison to find out what they're doing uh, they don't want anyone to escape and be released back into the world so they can tell them kind of what they're doing even though they don't know what they're building but at the same time they just don't want anyone outside of that prison knowing the empire's plans to use these people and you can see there's many other prisons just like that one around it and i bet there is a lot more on other planets just all around the galaxy just using ordinary people they just arrest ordinary civilians and bring them in to build parts for the death star which to me sounds very interesting and i hope it is the case and i do think it is the case and that's kind of a smart plot line i actually like that considering what they're doing in this prison i thought it was going to be something very not important whatsoever but this actually does sound really good so yeah these inmates are getting used to build parts for the death star and they're just going to get killed off afterwards because they can't have anyone knowing any details about what they're doing so people are going to be wondering wait why were they making you build these things and what was that for so that would be smart for them but uh, yeah, the acting in this is amazing. The guy who plays Gollum, what's his name? Oh no, my mind's going blank. But the guy who plays Gollum and, you know, the main monkey in Planet of the Apes. Like, Gollum? Is it Smeagol? Bro, I'm getting it mixed up anyway. No, no worries. That guy, you know who I'm talking about. Andy Circus. Andy Circus is the guy. And he is amazing in this show. His acting is phenomenal. And yeah, he just brings so much to this show. And this arc especially. You can see the fear in his face. You can see the nervousness. You can just read his face and exactly how he feels at that time. Just from his facial expressions, it's, it's really good. He needs more parts where he's not just being a CGI animal. In general, he is actually a really good actor. And I forgot to say he played Snoke. That should have been my first example. Probably because it's the sequels. I didn't want to mention it. But yeah, he played Snoke as well. Fun fact, if you didn't know already. Anyways, I also really like the ending because earlier in the episode, Andor asked uh, Andy Serkis, his character, how many guards are on each floor. And Andy Serkis' character wouldn't answer him. You know, he's very strict. He was like, I don't want to cause any problems. Don't mix me in whatever you're trying to do because I'll get out very soon. His character gets out of the prison very soon. So he's told. And so he's just trying to play it safe until he can get released. And he don't really care about anyone else and what happens to anyone else as long as he gets to go. So he didn't want to answer the question. But throughout everything that happens in this episode, when we get to the end after they're told what's actually going on, Andor asks again as they're walking away but with a great camera shot just following them. He asks him again, how many guards are on each floor? And Andy Circus says no more than 12 which was just a cool scene, it's pretty badass. Me describing it doesn't do it any justice, so you're gonna have to go see for yourself if you haven't already. But yeah, all around, I actually really enjoyed this episode. I don't know if it's my favorite episode of the season, but uh, yeah, just everything going on, you know, we see more of Bix. Oh yeah, Bix was getting interviewed, uh, interrogated even, and tortured with, I think, screams of dying children which is kind of kind of crazy for Star Wars. I'm not one of the fans of this show that says, oh, wow, look, look how dark this is. Oh, this just proves that Star Wars isn't just made for kids and all of that. Bro, we don't want dark stuff in Star Wars just to prove that it's not made for kids. Who cares? Even if it is made for kids, Star Wars is Star Wars. It's fire as hell. Adults love it. Everyone loves it from all age groups. Who cares if some non-Star Wars fans want to say, oh, it's childish. Okay, cool, mate. Go do your thing. That's fine. I don't really care, honestly. Who cares? If we're Star Wars fans, we just love it because we love it. We have our reasons. But yeah, basically what I'm saying is that we can have dark moments, but only if it makes sense. 
and this one does make sense you know in star wars because we don't normally get these dark moments like that apart from some parts in the prequels you know there has been dark moments but things like this where characters are getting tortured by screaming dying children in headphones you know kind of just messing them up a bit you know i guess that does make sense it's meant to torment you and really disturb you so that you give the empire information and the empire are evil people seem to forget that the empire are evil when they're not just some npc bots that you have to take down like the stormtroopers are they're just kind of fodder just for the heroes to take down but no the empire is evil for the casuals who need to know how evil the empire actually is they're not just a group with different morals and a different agenda they are genuinely evil and everyone who runs it is evil from the soldiers to the officers to the higher ups right up to palpatine you know they all are for the most part so yeah, I do give props to Andor for showing how evil the Empire is, because we don't see that in a lot of things. Anyways, for the overview, this episode is very fun. The acting was great. The plot was great. The scenes look amazing. The worlds look amazing. I mean, Coruscant continues to look really good. It's not as colourful as it was in the prequels. I do miss that a little bit. And actually, now I think about it, there is negatives that I want to point out again, because they need to know. There is no aliens in this show, and that's the worst part of it. It's absurd. You cannot just avoid putting aliens into the show because it doesn't match what you're trying to do with the show. This is Star Wars, it has certain themes, you keep them themes in Star Wars. No damn aliens, disregarding Star Wars themes and world features to create a cyberpunk atmosphere that benefits his own ideals, meaning the writer, for the story over a Star Wars story is terrible. You have to have the Star Wars themes, you cannot avoid it and disregard certain themes of Star Wars, such as aliens, just to make your show fit your agenda, it doesn't work. And my last negative is that there's too much talking and not enough action. This show is still on the verge of boring, even in this episode. Other episodes have just straight up been boring, but this one was actually fun. And other ones have been somewhat fun. But there's just too much dialogue, too much talking. And people hype up the dialogue too much. It's not that creative. It sounds good and it does tie in well. It's well written. But it's nothing phenomenal like Attack on Titan's dialogue. Attack on Titan, you have to listen to every word every character says. Otherwise, you're gonna miss out on some important information or a clue or a hint for who a character actually is or just important details in a plot line. This show is not like that. Good dialogue, but it is an Attack on Titan level dialogue. It's very default. You don't have to listen to everything. So the fact that the show is 90% talking is just way too much. Although me and a lot of other Star Wars fans really wanted a political series that we are getting in Andor. We are getting that with Andor, which I do appreciate. But I do want there to be just a little more action. Not literally the whole thing has to be talking because that can get very boring. You need talking and then something to hype you up again. Too much talking, you're going to notice that you're getting kind of bored and tired. It's when your mind starts to drift off a bit, especially when the dialogue is not as indulging like Attack on Titan, where you are excited to listen to the characters speak. This show just needs more action, and I'm not gonna stop saying that. You know, we're on episode nine now out of 12, we're three fourths of the way there, three quarters, and it's still boring. You know, the dialogue hasn't uh, changed my mind in any way. So we do need a lot more action. But other than that, yeah, I enjoyed the episode. There were the negatives, but other than that, I actually really did have fun with this one. So what do you think? Put it down below. Tell me if you agree or disagree with me. Give your points, give your opinions down below. Let me know. I'd love to hear it and I'll see you in the next one.